Good morning. <laughs> so, I decided to take yesterday off the vlog because, um, oh shit. So, YouTube world was like a couple days behind the vlog anyway. Um, I ended up just hanging out with Derek all day. It's just really not a vlogable. It's like, you know, you're just trying to hang out with somebody. Sometimes it's not the best time to like be vlogging. So, anyway. Like I said, it doesn't really matter because uh, I was a couple days ahead with the vlog anyway. So, I've got to get up yesterday's videos. Or, I'm sorry, I think they were for like two days ago. <laughs> so sleepy. Alright. Just getting my thumbnails. I already had one thumbnail down. But I need to add the other one. I saw my fingers pop up on the camera. I was like, is that a dog? <laughs> Alright. Let's see. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, let's see, find my thumbnail. I always scroll too fast and then I pass it. And then I have to like scroll back up. <laughs> Okay, so let's make it live. I got thumbnail up. Public, save. Okay. Then I have a mukbang I'm gonna make live as well. Here it is. Public. Yay. Alright, let's flip you around so you can look at what I'm looking at. I always end up going and checking the analytics over here too. I like to see how my videos are doing. So you can see these like last few days since I've been doing the double vlog thing, they've been getting a lot more views. So that's pretty cool. And I always like to see this video is my like first ever video. It just like still always shocks me how well it does. I think it has like 8,000 views or something. It's crazy. And then this one has like two, 3,000 views. Um, yeah, it's really crazy. So anyway, this shows you in the last like 28 days what the top videos were. And these are pretty much always my top videos. I need to update this one because I actually have found something better than these. I've considered taking this video down, but anyway. Um, but yeah, so you can see, usually these will change up, but these, like this video in particular has just stayed up there like, it's crazy. Anyway, so always go and check that. And you can go and look in like, uh, who your audience is. I look at that too. Mine's all females. And look, it's not subscribed people. Hello, I'm calling you out. <laughs> um, yeah, mostly female. Mostly English. And they're all from 25 to 34, which I know is not true. But anyway. Average views. Yeah, I don't know. I like looking at this stuff. <laughs> Did you need something? Does anybody else's dog play like that? Ah, that's what you say. Ah, that's what you say, Meeks. 
Max, I don't know if you've noticed, Max has about 16 different nicknames. He's a Meeks, he's a Weeks, he's a Weekies, he's a Meeksies. <laughs> he responds to many names. And sometimes he even responds to asshole. <laughs> Right, lady? And then she is just an a woo. She is a woo lady. Now she comes to class, she won't do in the woo. <laughs> what is that? Do you hear this like Silent Hill shit happening? What's happening? What the fuck? She hears it, watch. It's getting like really deep. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but when it was loud, it was crazy. Is it going to do it again? What is it, lady? She's serious. What is it? That was weird. I wonder if you guys can hear that. I'm about to go play it back and see. That's so crazy. Don't get me woman crazy. Ow! Ah! <laughs> Whoa, you're wild. You're a wild woman. <laughs> you're a crazy woman. You should say, do the choose. All right, <clears throat> I'm gonna go back and see if you can hear that shit. <laughs> I still have not cleaned up my table. Look, he's gonna come flying down this way. What do you think of this? You stretchy? Good morning. You never say hi to the vlog, huh? Don't worry, Rocco's not neglected. He's just usually doing his own thing. Well, here he comes. <laughs> But yeah, so Rocco's usually doing something else. Um, Max and Luna are usually up my butt constantly. So wherever I'm at, they're at. Rocco's not that way. So Rocco just kind of does his own thing. Unless his daddy's here. Rocco's a daddy's boy, huh? What do you think? Are you a daddy's boy? Yeah. And you... You're a mama's boy through and through. Him is just a baby. I love when he comes around this way. Especially when he starts running, which I don't think he is right now. He's kind of doing a lazy fetch this morning. Hi, right, buddy. Okay. I have to like fling the pig by its like legs. Whoops. Did you hit the table? Sorry. I need to take it down anyway. Look at Derek's dresser from all the clothes that need to be put away. I always like wash the laundry and throw it up there for him to put away and then it just sits there unless I put it away. <laughs> oh, you done playing fetch? All right. Tell the vlog good morning, Paco. Oh, he's so handsome. I think they're probably missing you because you're never in here because you're just usually doing your own thing. You don't want to hang out with everybody. But does he have to poop? Rocco, do you have to poop? You gotta poop. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't gone to the bathroom this morning. Oh, young boy. You got poop, Rocco? Here you go outside. You <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Get him, Luna. You gotta poop. You gotta poop. Yeah. All right. Out we go. This is his melon. <laughs> Off we go. Ba -ba. Always beating up your sister. You're so mean. All right. I'm gonna let them outside. All right. Dogs are out. So I'm gonna put some lashes on. Cause... I might, after I go to Starbucks, I might go to um, Big Lots. 
but I'm gonna bring my dogs, I think, to Starbucks. We'll go. I need to go get them some more treats. They really liked those sweet potato treats from that video I did like a while back where they were trying healthy treats. I still have another video in mind to like go and buy them a bunch of like fruits and veggies and like have them try that out because I think that'd be so hilarious. But so yesterday I did try to vlog a little bit, but it was just like I knew like it wasn't going to um, be enough to like put into like a full vlog. Um, but I still kind of want to like address it a little bit. Um, so yesterday I saw some like, uh, well, a lot of us saw some ugliness behind the curtain of the grooming industry. Um, and I think it's really, it's really sad that like we're, there's so many grudges in the industry and so many people that don't like each other. And there's so many like stupid, like can't be friends with these people, but can be friends with these people kind of like, it's very, you know, like when you're in high school, <laughs> that's kind of what it feels like being in the grooming industry sometimes. Um, it, it's just kind of crazy. And I, I just wish I saw more support for each other instead of, you know, people being really catty to each other behind the scenes. Um, and it's just really sad because actually the controversy I saw was between very, very talented groomers. And, you know, normally I just see like, I, and this is why I don't do a lot of Facebook, because normally when I get on Facebook, especially on like, you know, the Facebook groups, like the, the professional grooming groups on Facebook, it's really fucking ugly in those groups. I've seen some like true ugliness. Um, and, you know, that's normally all I see. And like, that's, it's already bad enough that we're that mean to each other. But I just saw like two like top of the industry people going at it. And without even taking a side, it's like, you know, if these people can't even get along, then it's like, well, how can we expect the other groomers in these other groups to get along? Like, I don't know. It's, it sucks. I just wish we could all more work together instead of it being like this big thing and there's always competition. <coughs> and that's actually another thing I want to talk about that Delise made a live, Delise from Bridal Blows made a live yesterday talking about how we shouldn't, it, it shouldn't be a competition. And I really agree with her on that. It shouldn't be a competition. That's why I'm not competing. I don't, I don't like competition. I don't like competition. That's why I, you want to know I'm not competing. I don't like to fucking compete. I don't like to, it stresses me out. The thought of competition brings me back to my mental state of taking a state board test for cosmetology. And I remember there was a lot of sleepless nights associated with that fucking state board uh, exam. So anyway, uh, I don't prefer to like stress myself out like that. <laughs> so I don't want to compete. Um, in a literal sense, but even figuratively, like, you know, I use Jilly as an example because I feel like we're really on the same wavelength, but me and Jilly, although we're very similar, we have many differences, like, with what we want out of things. Like, Jilly wants to compete. Like, she wants to compete. Not, And I mean, like, in grooming industry, not like she's trying to compete with me. Like, no, it's not like that. We're not competing with each other because we don't need to. You know, it's like, there's plenty of room for all of us. Like we have different directions. Like, like I said, Jilly's into, like she wants to compete. She wants to do creative grooming. You know, that's more her direction. I want to do YouTube. Like that's why I've been so focused on YouTube because that's what I want to do. That's what I've wanted to do since I started watching YouTube when I was in high school. That's what I wanted to do. And I made my first video when I was in high school hated it, deleted it, and did that for many years up until I had the balls to just keep them up. And that didn't happen until I had June and Delise from Bridal Bows. June the Groomer is not with Bridal Bows. I feel like I said that, like they were affiliated. They're not affiliated. They're two different people, but um, they both gave me the encouragement that I needed to actually just keep the videos up. That's what it was. It wasn't even like they gave me the motivation to record them because I was already recording them. Uh, I was uploading them too. I was just deleting them. 
I didn't have very many subscribers. My videos would only be seen by like five people or so before they deleted them. I had some, like I did a paranormal story time like back in the day that got like a couple thousand views, but like I ended up taking that one down too. I've I've redone part of it, but I'll I'll redo the whole thing. I just didn't like how it came out, you know, later down the line. I was like, I wanna redo that. So I did. But um anyway. The, the moral of the story is that we shouldn't have to compete with each other. Like, there's plenty of room for all of us. Like, we can make this, like, a fun thing, like, a fun career where we all help each other out, you know. And I know that's probably never going to happen that everybody's just, like, magically on the same page. Because it's probably, like, the time that will happen is when the rest of the world is also on the same page. You know what I mean? Like, it's never going to happen that we're all going to be on the same page. But, like, I just, like, I definitely think that we can try harder to be nicer to each other and even the people we don't like because guess what there are people i don't like in the grooming industry i could name a couple that i'm not a fan of um but i also don't need to like add fuel to the fire i don't feel the need to like message them and be like hey i think you're shitty or whatever you know if i see them out i'm gonna be polite to them like i would to any other human because that's what you should do and, you know, and the thing is, too, like, people are very big and bold over social media, over behind a keyboard. So, like, I don't know. I'm trying to, like, learn to forgive people, like, even if they've done something that has, like, pissed me off, you know? Like, I just try to give them the benefit of the doubt. Okay, so here's something that, like, really helped me. Um, Megan, I can't ever remember her last name, but she was the granddaughter of the man that started the Westboro Baptist Church. And she grew up holding signs saying terrible things about how, you know, God wanted to kill gay people. And I mean, just terrible things, like terrible things about like Jewish people. You know, Westboro Baptist Church is known for its shock factor. That's what they do is they like to put like really shocking things on signs and spread a lot of hatred. And, you know, she ended up leaving the church and which is a big deal because this was her grandfather that started it. And this, she was grown up into it. Like she didn't know anything different until she went to Twitter and some people took the time to actually talk to her and help her through it. And that changed everything. They, they started, they took enough time to talk to her to be able to learn more about her religion. And then they found flaws in it, which they pointed out to her, which ended up changing her mind. So my point is, and she said something that resonated with me so hard. She said, stop, because she was the other side, right? She was that, like, aggressive side that, you know, she needed somebody to talk to her. But most people were just, you know, throwing things at them, like, demonstrating all the things that they thought were true, right? So they thought, like, oh, all these people that aren't in the church are evil. They're evil. They're aggressive. They're mean. And then they go out and we're throwing stuff at them. So they're like, okay, yeah, like what I'm saying is obviously true. These people are aggressive. They're throwing things, whatever. So she said to think of it, to stop thinking of it as the other side is like intentionally trying to like be bad because that's the thing, even the Westboro Baptist Church, like they don't believe what they're doing is wrong. Like they, and I know it's like, how could you hold something so hateful and not see a problem with it? But it's like, they just don't see any different like they think in a, they think in their way that they are helping the rest of the world they think they love us more than we love us like they care so much about us that they're going to let us know that we are all going to be condemned to hell because we're not following their religion and that, so they are in their world they're not trying to be hateful they're not like let's go like start a fucking war let's go like like get a rise out of people because that's like what do they do a lot of time they're just trying to get like a rise out of people like and in a way, uh, yeah, obviously, by what they're posting and stuff, they are trying to be shocking. But, like, they're not doing it for, like, the ill intent that you would assume. Like, you're, like, okay, me, I assume that they're doing it because they fucking hated gay people or whatever. And maybe they do, maybe they don't. But what they believe in their book is that God hates gay people. So they think they're doing, like, God's will. Okay, so, like, 
to cut them like and I hate to cut them any slack but it's like but at the same time you have to cut them a little bit of slack because they just don't know better um another example is like people like especially in South Carolina a lot of people have their dogs tied out in their backyard and like yeah I could sit here all day long and be so mad at them for tying their dogs out in their backyard like how could you do that when it's so fucking cold or it's so fucking hot why would you ever do that like are you like what kind of disgusting human do you have to be to do something like that and the answer is is they're probably not they probably just grew up with parents that kept dogs outside or I have friends like I had a friend in hair school that flat out told me she didn't understand why animals should come inside and like she wasn't doing it with like malicious intent she just really believed that animals should stay outside so basically what I'm getting at is like yeah you're not gonna agree with everyone ever like ever. There's like plenty of people, every, every single person in my life, I disagree with them on something, you know, and that's okay. So agree to disagree. Like we can all be okay. We can all talk to each other and we don't have to like be catty on Facebook or online or on a phone call or whatever. Like you don't, you don't have to do that. Like we can just talk it out and like just try to give the other side the benefit of the doubt. Even if it seems unlikely, even if it seems like they're just a fucking douchebag, you know, just try to give them the benefit of the doubt and it will make you feel a little bit better. I know it helps me to feel better if I like really feel like somebody's done something wrong to me and I like, and it makes you feel angry at first, right? You're you're just so mad but then if you try to see it from their side like well what what are they feeling like what you know may, where is this misunderstanding because you know there's two sides to every story and then there's the truth right so remember that like so your side's not right either okay so like most of the time in these situations like neither party is right um and maybe if we just like talked it out and you know things could be different but whatever there's my soapbox for the day that I just went on for 11 minutes on um so now my the rest of my vlog is gonna have to be like <laughs> different well whatever it can be a long vlog it doesn't matter but I really I do think that's important to talk about like and I did try to talk about the vlog yesterday I feel like that's part of the reason I ended up just being like fuck this vlog because I don't think it came across as like it did this morning like I think I was more like angry at the time so it was like more emotional response whereas like now it's like I mean I'm still like upset I just like I want to see more harmony in the grooming industry and I want to see us working together more to accomplish things instead of fighting each other so much um and that's on everyone's end like every like I said every person involved it's like we need to work this out like be the bigger person if you think that other person's being a little motherfucker be the bigger person you know so anyway i love you guys you guys i'm frustrated i well obviously but the well with the industry but i'm frustrated because i sent back all that nature specialty stuff and i'm kicking myself because I don't know if it's gotten lost in the mail or what, but I keep trying to message Pet Store Direct. And um, so I was supposed to get there like the Thursday after Christmas, or sorry, the Thursday before Christmas. Um, so the 19th of December was when it was supposed to get there. And um, I messaged them like a couple of days after Christmas. I was like, hey, did you get it? Because I checked my account, didn't see the refund reflected. Um, and they were like, no, didn't get it. Um, they were like, we'll let you know Monday. So Monday came and went, didn't hear anything. So I waited till Tuesday, messaged them again. I was like, hey, uh, have you gotten anything? And they were like, oh no, we'll get in contact later this week. Well, later this week came and went and here we are back on Monday. So I messaged them again and I was like, have you guys gotten anything? And it's like one of those things, like, I mean, it's... Like, if it got lost in the mail, it's not really their fault, but it's kind of like, could you at least, like, let me know? Like, when you say, like, you're going to let me know this day, can you at least, like, let me know that day? Because it's like, when I'm just not getting a response, I'm getting a little annoyed. And I'm like, so am I just out $50? No, even more than that, because it was $50 for the transaction, but then it cost me another, like, $20 to send it back. So I would have been better off to just keep it is what I'm saying. So I guess what I'm saying is that if you need to return something, you probably just shouldn't. You might as well just hold on to it because at least you could use the shit. That's kind of where I'm at on it. Like, well, fuck, I would have rather used it than to send it off to limbo. And then now I'm just out $70. Like, great. Fantastic. So anyway, I was annoyed too because I was actually trying to wait to get that credit to order more shit. 
But since that didn't happen, I ended up just ordering from a different website. Because I was like, well, I'm not going to fucking invest more money. Like, you know? So I was like, all right. If I'm going to have to spend more money either way, then I'm going to at least go to a different website. Because um, also, I had pretty much gone through every facial on Pet Store Direct. And I hadn't found a single one I liked. So, um, yeah. I'm just kind of over it. Um... And like I said, it's not really, like, Pestor Direct's fault. Like, I, I don't think they're, like, lying. Like, I'm not trying to imply that. I don't want to imply that they're lying or anything like that. It's not that. It's, like, that I'm frustrated. Like, I'm, I'm assuming this was lost in the mail. Because here's the thing. I sent out three packages at the same time. I sent one to Australia, one to the United K Kingdom, and one to Fort Lauderdale, Florida, which I'm in South Carolina. So you would think the Flor Fort Lauderdale would get there the fastest and the easiest, but the UK and the um, Australia packages are there. They've gotten their shit, but somehow Fort Lauderdale didn't. So I'm guessing maybe somebody stole the package off of their doorstep or something, or it got lost in the mail, and then now I'm the one that's going to get fucked for it. So moral of my story is if you have something that you think you might want to return and you have to actually send it back, unless it's like Amazon or something, I probably wouldn't. Just hold on to the shit and just use it up. That's that's what I should have done. I was just so against it because like I really didn't like that nature specialties didn't list ingredients. Um... So anyway, but I'm so frustrated. I'm like, where the fuck is that package? Like, I'm, I'm guessing I'm just out the $70 for it. But now I'm really kicking myself because I wish I would have just used it. Because then at least I could have got my money's worth. But now I just have nothing. <laughs> so I'm a little annoyed. But I found a Red Bull in the fridge. So I'm not annoyed about that. It's not like that surprising. Like, I, I kind of forgot I got one yesterday that I put in the fridge that I didn't drink. So happy about that anyway. I'm gonna go to Starbucks in a little bit, but I just don't know what I want yet. I don't think I want a pink drink today. I got a pink drink yesterday. I'm just finding I'm not drinking them. I'm not drinking them all the way, like when I get the pink drinks anymore. Um, I'm like leaving, like I'm probably drinking maybe a grande's worth and like still leaving the rest, so. And it's the same thing that's happening with like the coffee and stuff. I don't know. I mean, it's kind of a good thing because Starbucks is so expensive that, like, I'm not finding a drink I like right now. That's probably a good thing. But, like, I don't know. I like going. I You know why I go to Starbucks is because it makes, like, it gives me this, like, when, it, okay, so I have, like, OCD, like, literal diagnosed OCD. And, like, what they talk about is, like, when you have, like, an obsessive compulsive thing, which I think is kind of what Starbucks is for me, it's, like, this release that you get. Right? So, like, when you do your compulsive action, which for me would be, like, that, because you have to keep in mind, like, for a while I was going to Starbucks, like, four times a day. Like, when I was working at the doghouse and I was right next to it, I was there all day long because it was, like, my little bit of a, like, a release because I was so stressed at work all day and because I was so stressed in my environment and, like, not happy with things. I didn't feel like I had control. My Starbucks was, like, my control. You know, it was, like, the one thing I could be, like, this is mine. You know, so... Uh, I think that's honestly what it is more so even than the drinks is that it's something about going through the line with all the people there and they're all like my friends and they're so nice to me and I always have a good experience and it's like even like I mean I have no lie been driving into Starbucks like bawling my fucking eyes out especially after my grandma died. <clears throat> I would drive through just like bawling some days I'm like stopping like long enough to order my drinks and to go through the window and like just that would be like enough that it would make my day a little bit better like when I was dealing with like the worst of the worst like oh god when I went through losing my grandma like and that's something I'll talk about more in depth I want to make a full video on like the day that I lost my grandma the day that I lost Dwayne well the both of them, well, see, here's the thing, because, like, to just talk about that day is really hard, because there's so much leading up to it. My grandma was sick for a fucking year before she died, and then Dwayne was sick for, like, let's see, three months he was sick in the hospital. Um, but yeah, they were both, it was shitty. But it, it made me into the person I am now, and I know, I'm, actually, I was talking to, um, Alex and Jilly and Steph about it, 
So we like encountered this like little girl. She's like really young. She's like 21, 22. She's like a little baby. But anyway, she's got like for a little baby, she's got real bad bratty attitude to her. And we were talking about it like that has a lot to do with her age. Like, you know, um, that when you're so young, like you don't think like that. And it's so true. Like when I was 21, 22, like that girl's age, like I was so like just young and dumb, like, I didn't think ahead, like, which is what this girl's, like, she's, like, she just doesn't think ahead, like, she's basically this girl that, like, none of us really like too much, like, but, you know, she's, like, she's one of those I was talking about, you just gotta get, give her the benefit of the doubt, like, she's young, she's young as fuck, she don't know better, and we were talking about it, and I said, I was, like, I was her until my grandma died, like, I didn't get it. Like, I didn't care. I didn't care to get it. Like, I didn't even, like, I did not give a shit. I was 21. You couldn't tell me shit. You know? So, it's like, I get it. I get how that is. Like, I remember being that way. I remember what a brat I was and how shitty of a person I was. Like, even, like, it made me realize how much I wasn't there for people that needed me. Oh, so much when I, I was, like, not there for people that needed me. Especially people that lost somebody. I didn't know how to be there for them. I'm not saying I still do. I, or I still don't. Like, I still, like, find myself, you know, I'll I'll be talking. Like, something will happen with Jilly and it'll take me, like, a week to be like, holy shit. Like, you know, what's, what even happened? Or, like, you didn't get to tell me about that or whatever. And it's like, and it makes me feel so bad. But I try to be more aware of it. Like, whereas when I was, like, 21, 22, I didn't give a shit. I really didn't. And when I was younger than that, I cared even less. Like, I didn't care about other people. I didn't care about myself. I dealt with... I mean, and I'm not trying to sit here and, like, list excuses. But, like, I had a relatively normal life until I was about 16. The only thing that was, like, different about me growing up is that I didn't have my dad. I grew up with just my mom and I lived with my grandparents up until I would think I was seven or eight when my mom married my stepdad, Dwayne. Um, and then everything was very normal until I was 16 and I got a message on MySpace one day from my dad who I'd never talked to my entire life. And he was trying to get a hold of my mom and I knew who he was. I knew who he was when he messaged me. Um, and he proceeded to make the next, like, year or two years of my life absolutely fucking miserable. And he stayed in the picture up until, uh, my grandma died. And basically, he is one of those that, like, and I'll, I'll make a video on him one day. I don't give a shit. And I think that it really might help people that have also dealt with a fucking deadbeat piece of shit parent <laughs> that doesn't deserve them, doesn't deserve to be in their life, that's my dad. Like, he doesn't, I don't talk to my dad. My dad, when he came back, when I was 16, he blamed it all on my grandma, who was my person. Like, my grandma was the person I was the closest to. Like, even over my mom, and me and my mom are a lot closer now, but when my grandma was alive, I was the closest to my grandma. That was my person. And he had the audacity when he came back in the picture to blame it all on my grandma. Oh, I wasn't around because your grandma wouldn't let me, which first of all is bullshit. Like if he tried to take us to, to take it to court or anything, it's a fucking lie is what it is. Uh, it was uh, manipulation is what it was. He was, um, what is it like narcissistic or something? Maybe not even narcissistic, but he just like, it was manipulative. He wanted a certain reaction from us. He knew that he wasn't going to get it unless he used an excuse. So he decided to say, oh, it's all your grandma's fault. If she hadn't pushed me out, then I would have been in your life this whole time. So blame her, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, me and him didn't hit it off. We had a lot of issues. He decided to come into his daughter's life when she was 16. Like, do you know, I, I was a bitch when I was 16. Like, good God, he'd be better off coming in now. At least I might be nice to him. But I was a fucking bitch when I was 16. And then he decided, like, it was, it was a whole shit show. Like, he decided, like, he was going to, like, change how I did everything. Like, he wanted to monitor who I was friends with. Like, doing a bunch of shit you just shouldn't do with a 16-year-old girl. So, it was bad. And I stopped talking to him for a lot of years. I just ignored him. Like, he would, messaging, he would message me, and I would ignore him, and he'd message me, and I'd ignore him. And then my grandma died. And he had the blatant audacity to message me and ask me if I wanted to talk to him about my grandma. I ripped him a new fucking asshole. I was like, you 
have never done anything for me besides come in and ruin a couple years of my life. He almost made me, not, not made me, I don't want to say those words, but like, because of all the stress that I had going on, I gave up on school. I didn't give a shit about school. Are you kidding me? Like, there was so much more going on. And, like, there's even, like, I'm barely scratching the surface of what happened. So, like, with all this shit going on, the last thing I was worried about was school. So, I nearly failed my sophomore year. Um, I fucking moved out. Me and my mom, because of him, had, like, this huge falling out. Because she ended up, like, siding with, it was bad you guys so I moved out of my mom's house had to move in with my grandparents like he like fucked up like literally like two three years of my life until I just stopped talking to him and then he would text me like every holiday like oh hey honey I love you blah 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 well he had the audacity to text me after my grandma died and say like oh hey like I heard what happened to your grandma and like you know I I hope that you're okay if you want to talk to me blah 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 I was like you didn't fucking like grandma, and I was like, and she hated you. I was like, out of anyone in this fucking world that I would talk to about her dying, you would be the last one. And I wish I could remember everything I said to him. I ripped him a new fucking asshole. And he responded back, and I will never forget. He responded back, and he said, and all of this time, I thought I had the wrong number. And that's the last time I talked to my dad. <laughs> Straight up, it is. I'm not lying. That is the last time I talked to my dad, and that was at least three years ago. It would have been on Thanksgiving three years ago. So he's never tried to talk to me again. I don't think he ever will. I really don't think he ever will. I'll probably never hear of him dying. <clears throat> I don't care to. I won't. They, I mean, even if, if they called me tomorrow and they were like, your dad died, I'd be like, okay. Is he going to send any of the fucking, am I going to get some money at least like out of all of this? Like, you know, he didn't fucking send child support my entire life. He never paid child support because here's the real truth of it was that like, and this like, wow, this went on a whole different turn. So if you guys just want to know, know my whole background story, then here you go. Um, but anyway, so he didn't pay child support because my mom and my grandma felt that if they chased him and went after him for child support, then he would feel like he had some rights to me and they didn't want him involved in my life. So that's why he never paid child support. So anyway, if he died, and that may sound like super cruel, but like, this man has done nothing for my life. Nothing for me. He is, like when even him coming back, it wasn't for me. It was not for me. It was for him. He needed something. His wife had just like had a miscarriage. Like it was like, I he needed something out of it. And that's always the type of person he's been and who he'll always be. And if you're ever seeing this, Mike, because I don't have enough respect for you to call you my dad. You don't... You're not a dad. You're a fucking sperm donor, first of all. Um, if you're ever seeing this, Mike, fuck you. Don't ever talk to me again, by the way. <laughs> and let me tell you how I really feel. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, this vlog has been very ranty today. I think I'm just, like, in a mood. I think I've just been, like, at that, like, point of being, like... Like, I've, like, tried to sit back and, like, not say anything about a lot of things. And, like, there's a lot of things that, like, really bother me. And I I do need to get better about saying things, like, when things bother me. Um, and I think what started this is, like, the drama, like, the grooming industry. And, like, it is frustrating. Like, I've had days where I'm, like, I don't even want to, like... Not that I don't want to groom anymore. I'll always groom and I'll always make these videos. But... Because of, like, the behavior of a lot of these, like, top people behind the scenes, um, I probably, I don't have interest in teaching for Barkley or, like, or not Barkley, like, but, like, any of the groom expos. Like, I don't have interest in doing that anymore because it's so catty. Like, oh, you get in there and, like, so, like people think you don't deserve it and then, like, you're so, like, harshly criticized for it. It's, like, it's ugly. Like, I, I said this in yesterday's video, but that's not what I want anymore. Like, I want to uh go to like private shops like I have like my followers like I would love to like go and like help if like it was like a small shop of like five ten people I could go and do like private lessons or even like um like maybe on like I don't know there's like all kinds of options because I'd love to teach more about like social media and putting yourself out there and like filming and like I don't know training yourself to talk and stay on subject uh I think I could talk a lot about that stuff. So, I have a lot of goals with it. But, anyway, this is going to be a long as fuck vlog today. Sorry. It's going to be like an hour long and me just ranting. Whatever.
hey, you got to know my background story. You got to know how I feel. I think I've already kind of said how I feel about the grooming industry. I think that I what I said earlier about like it's like high school. That's that's the grooming industry. If you want to know, and uh, Gene the groomer has been very vocal about it. So if you want to know more about it, I think you can go watch some videos on his channel where he talks about it. But yeah, it's it's literally like high school in the grooming industry. It's a little bit embarrassing, and I would love to see uh, instead of the cattiness and like the like just picking at each other like. Can we just not? Like I said, there's people I don't like either. And like, you know what? You know what I do? I don't follow them. We're not friends on Facebook. We're not, I don't follow them on Instagram. I don't follow their fucking YouTubes. I don't, nothing that they have. They're on the Twitter. I'm not following them on Twitter. I don't follow them. Why? Because I'm not going to sit there and hate watch them because I don't like them. There's something about them that rubs me the wrong way and I'm not going to go and fucking follow them and watch, like sit there like bitter face hateful watching them. I'm not going to do it. And if you're sitting there bitter face hateful watching this video, hey bitch, what's up? <laughs> um, but you know, I just, I just don't care to do that. That's just not me. I don't, I don't know. That's, I feel better just not seeing it. So that's kind of where I keep it is like, I just rather not see it. Like I said, and like, I mean, we're all going to have to see each other at trade shows. Like I said, there's groomers I don't like. I'm going to have to see them at the trade show too. And guess what? If I see them, I'll smile and nod or maybe do a little wave or be polite. You know, I don't need to sit there and be like, there's that bitch. You know, like again, high school, <laughs> that's, that's what it feels like. And I feel like that's how a lot of the groomers act to each other. Like, like you guys, we're adults. We're all adults. Like I'd say you have to at least be 18 to start grooming. So we're all way too old to be acting like that. Silly. Anyway, I rambled on enough. <laughs> I'm going to have to edit this. I'm going to be like, oh my God, shut the fuck up. <laughs> all right. I love you guys. I'll check back in in a bit. All right, I'm back. So what I do whenever I'm doing these vlogs is that like as I go, I put them all in iMovie, right? So, like, um, to compile them together, I need to put them in iMovie. So, what I do is, like, I, uh, you know, do a video. Then I take a break for a little bit. I put it in iMovie and get it all together. So, that way, at the end of the day, all I've got to do is put it on my phone and then upload it to YouTube. Or I think you can upload it straight from iMovie, but I prefer to, like, save it to my phone and then upload it. Because I like to make sure everything uploads is private. Because usually I upload a couple days before I post. So... I went back and I just rewatched all that rant that I just like went on and I actually feel like I did so well. I was proud of myself and that doesn't happen often. Normally I'm like, shut the fuck up, Janine. And that's like really thought I, I like, I thought I was going to trash this whole vlog. I was like, you went off way too long. You went on like a 20 minute rant about your whole life story. Um, but that was real as fuck. Like I can tell you because I know me. <laughs> I know me pretty well. That was, that's me. Like, that's, like, my background. That's, like, something, like, with the grooming industry, this is, like, something that's been, like, irking me for, like, a while now. I'm, like, because I was so excited to, to be a part of this industry. I, like, really looked up to all of these people. I still do. I so look up to all of them. As far as, like, their grooms go, I'll continue to, like, learn from them. But it's, like, there's just so many people that it's, like, you know, they, when they say don't, don't meet your idols, isn't that what they say? Like, don't meet your idols because they can't live up to your expectations. Yeah, I get it. Um, but yeah, I, I think I'm gonna leave this vlog as is. Like, I was like, maybe I need to go take some parts out. But no, like, I think that everything I touched on, I did it in a way that I'm happy with. So I'm gonna leave it. So you guys get to see me go on a rant today, which I try not to do. <laughs> I just really, I want to keep it positive as much as possible, but got to keep it real too, right? That's why a lot of people watch me. That's what I, I that's what I've been told. Okay. I'm, I'm going off of what people have said to me and people have told me that they like to watch me because they think I'm real. And I'm telling you that everything I just said was 100% real. I mean, I just went on a 20-minute rant with no edits, so you can assume that that was probably my true feelings on things. Um, so, yeah.
I'm not mad at it. I was like a little worried for a second. I was like, am I going to have to trash a whole nother day's vlog? <laughs> it is going to be a long vlog. I would guess today is going to be like maybe like an hour because um, it's also 1046 a.m. right now. <laughs> I've like already gone on a full rant about my whole life um, by 1046 a.m. So yeah, today's going to be a long vlog, but I'm keeping it. It's This is what we're doing, okay? It's happening. So I hope you guys enjoyed. All right, on today's episode of I Lose All My Shit All The Time, I can't find my wallet. <laughs> so, not in the bathroom. I kind of recall it being in my jacket pocket, but I also thought something else was in my jacket pocket yesterday. What was it, my keys? And they weren't, so. Here's the jacket I was wearing. Yeah. Hmm, this one might be a tough one because I really can't recall. I'm trying to think all my regular spots. <laughs> huh. Okay, let's see, let's see. Something landed in here. Did I get it somewhere like super weird today? I already like started looking before I even started filming. <laughs> so it's real lost today apparently. I need it. I can't go and do anything without my wallet. <laughs> I didn't already put it in my pocket, did I? I've done that before. <laughs> like, already grabbed it and forgot. I grabbed it. Oh, there's my um, Red Bull. Hmm. Well, where could it be? Where could it be? Max! I lost my wallet. This is hard. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna keep looking. <laughs> All right. Found my wallet. Crisis averted. It was um okay. So last night we went to Derek's dad's and we went to Tractor Supply because he had to get um. He like recorded some people and I think he needed to like download it onto his laptop so he could work at it or, or work on it at our house. And um so he did that and then we went to Tractor Supply and we like went by the gas station and like bought a bunch of shit. So anyway, we went to walk in and we had so much shit. So I was like carrying like way more than I should have been. I was carrying like three drinks and my phone and my wallet and like just a bunch of other shit. And uh I dropped my fucking wallet in our carport. So, anyway, that's where it was. I just, like, I searched the house, like, high and low, and I was like, it's not in here. Like, for sure. I checked all the normal places I put it, because I'm a creature of habit. I always tend to put things in the same places. So, um, yeah, I looked at my places. It wasn't in any of those. It wasn't in any of my clothes. Like, because that's the only thing I was thinking is, like, maybe a jacket pocket. Like, I've done that before, but... Yeah, it was in the carport. So anyway, found it. That was quite the hunt. I was getting a little stressed. I was like, am I, did I like for real like lose my fucking wallet? I think that was my old customer. Um, but yeah, found it. So uh, I'm on the way to Big Lot, so I'm gonna go for real. I like debated. I almost brought the dogs, and then I was like, no, it's like late enough. You might as well just go to Big Lots. Then you can take all your shit down today, and then you'll have more motivation to clean the rest of your house because I'm tired of my house looking like shit, especially now that I vlog because I like go to show my house. I'm like, God, my house is a fucking wreck. Sorry, you guys. Um, yeah, I'm a, a normal human just like everybody else that like has a pretty messy world. <laughs> I, th I mean, like, I keep it like pretty clean, like, you know, like. But I think we all, like, tend to not, like, be perfect. Unless you're just, like, obsessive about it like my grandpa is. My grandpa, oh my god. He's, like, the type that, like, <clears throat> you'll have, like, a sip left in your drink and he's there. Are you done with that? Like, he's, like, ready to take it away, throw it away, fucking put it in the dishwasher, whatever. Um, after Dwayne's funeral, he was... <laughs> He was doing that, like, the whole time. It was, like, every time somebody was, like, done eating, he was on them, like, a fucking hawk. He's like, can I take that plate? Like, Grampy, like, they're gonna throw it away. Like, leave him alone. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> but that's just how he is. I think he's probably where I get OCD from. 
syndrome. Because <laughs> it is like a genetic thing. Like if you have it, then it's more likely that you like probably picked it up from somebody in your family. Um, and there, that's the thing about uh, OCD is it's like the third most common, what is it called? Like I, I don't want to say like, it's not like a disease. Like I don't know what the fuck you call it, but whatever. It's like the third most common like mental illness, whatever that there is, it's like one in three people have it or something like that. Like a lot of people fucking have OCD. A lot of people have like different phases of OCD. It affects people differently. Mine was like, I noticed it with like my car. Like I was locking my car when I knew it was already locked. Like I would know for sure in my brain that I'd already locked it, but like it was like I had this like incredible like, like nagging feeling that I needed to lock it again and like it wouldn't go away until I locked it and then I'd lock it and that would last about an hour and then I would feel like I needed to lock it again and um that's where I first like noticed like this is not normal <laughs> like I know for a fact my car is locked like why am I like feeling like I need to lock it again like this is so weird um and I've got like a lot of things like that but that was like where I first noticed it so Anyway, we need to learn more about these things in school because I had no idea that that was OCD. <laughs> like, I really had no clue. I thought OCD was, like, obsessively, like, washing your hands or turning light switches on and off a lot or whatever. And it was, like, you know, so that's what I thought it was. So I never thought I had anything like that. Like, when you see it on TV or whatever, it's, like, such an extreme case that you're, like, that's not me. But then, like, I was, I went and saw a therapist after my grandma died. And she was, like, I was, like, telling her something and she's, like, those are like obsessive compulsive tendencies. She's like, do you know what OCD is? And I was like, I mean, like kind of, yeah. And she's like, I think you need to look into it. So I started like reading about it and I was like, wow, <laughs> I think I might really have OCD. So then like she like recommended like all these workbooks and like I like really worked at it and have gotten it under control. There's still things that nag at me, but like now at least it was like as soon as I figured out what it was, then it was like better because like I'm like so like I, I don't know everything happens for a reason that when things were nagging at me, I was like there must be a reason like this like maybe like I didn't lock my car I didn't hit the button the right way and like maybe like somebody's gonna break into my car or something and maybe that's why I feel like this like you know like I would get like that so it was bad but anyway five minutes me telling you about having OCD but hey maybe you didn't know if you like have tendencies like that maybe it's OCD maybe you should talk to a doctor because some people need medication for it. They recommended me medication for it, but I didn't want to take it because it was something I was going to have to take for the rest of my life, and I didn't want to do that. So I learned how to combat it, and I'm always learning how to combat it, and it always takes practice, and it's not easy, but um, I don't want to take medicine for the rest of my life, so I think it's better than the alternative. And I think it makes me exercise my own brain, if that makes sense. Like, it makes me focus. Like, when I'm having one of those moments, I'm like, this is OCD. You know what it is. And you need to, like, come back down to earth. Because that's kind of how I feel. Like, I'm, like, up in space, like, stressing, like, on a whole nother level kind of thing. And it's like, all right, come back down to earth. You're okay. This is OCD. And you're fine. And that's what works for me. But anyway, I am off to uh, Big Lots. This has been, like, a really deep vlog kind of like talked about a lot of things that are like really deep but um I think it's good though I feel good like you know I feel like I'm talking about things that are like really heavy but like I feel good and like in a way like even talking about it getting it off my chest makes me feel even better but anyway I am on the way to Big Lots I'm gonna go get some containers for my Christmas stuff maybe I'll try to like record a little bit in there but um we'll see so anyway love you guys talk to you in a bit see this this is every time there's a storm in Anderson. Oops, sorry people, I'm not trying to film you, but like seriously, every single time. And there's actually two over there. One you can't see, it's like over this way. It's actually blocking the whole road. I'll show you guys on my way out. Okay, I'm about to go in. Oh, there's people. Here we go, through fallen tree land. <laughs> oh my God, like seriously, that's insane. Uh Okay, <laughs> I wasn't sure if I was recording. I was like, wait a second. Um, so anyway, I got my, I got two containers. I spent $20, which I thought was fairly fair because I got two big containers. I got like one smaller one that I'm hoping will fit all of the inside stuff. And then I got a big one that I'm hoping will fit all the outside stuff. I'm hoping they'll like have plenty of room in both, 
you know, so that way I'm just like, I have plenty of extra room if I get future Christmas things, you know. I thought about looking at some of the stuff that they had marked down, but I was like, see, that's why I'm so terrible about shopping after the holidays. I'm so burnt out on them that I'm like, I don't want to look at any more Christmas stuff. I'm not in the mood anymore. You know, I'm not, I don't like planning enough ahead, I guess, but all right, so now I have no more excuses. I have to fucking put my Christmas shit up because I have all this stuff to do it. So I do, I probably will get Derek to uh, take down a lot of the outside stuff. Like he wrapped all the stuff around the bushes and stuff for me. So I'll probably have him do that. But I can probably disconnect like my little thing I wrapped around the railing and like stuff like that. So I can start getting it up. I can probably get the Christmas tree down. I don't see why I wouldn't be able to get the Christmas tree down so I should be able to do that by myself get all that cleaned up get my living room clean and then I need to clean like that middle dining room area where my green room is put all of that stuff up yeah no more excuses I gotta clean my house and I really honestly want to do some yoga today too I've really been mean get back on track and yesterday I woke up like really fucking sore whoa God, that guy almost, like, hit that car. That was crazy. Um, so, anyway, yeah, I've got a lot to do. But I'll check in with you guys once I am uh, undecorating my house. So I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay, I'm home. So, got to get out these big-ass buckets that I got. I'll show you guys in a minute. Well, didn't think about this. I kind of thought I could carry it all easily. Maybe I can't. Man. I was just listening to Fleetwood Mac and it just like reminded... Guys, like, isn't it crazy how music can like bring you to a certain place? Oh shit, I just remembered I have my other Red Bulls in the car. I need to grab that. But... So every time I listen to like Fleetwood Mac, I just like get this like really serene, peaceful kind of feeling. Like it just brings me back to this like really calm place that I was in in my life. And uh, yeah, it just, it, it's crazy. Like isn't it crazy how music can do that? I've like seen things about like how music can bring back memories for people with like Alzheimer's and stuff. Like isn't that so cool? But I was just like thinking about that. I was like, man, like crazy how just like a song can make me feel so calm and peaceful so especially because I feel like I've been so on edge recently and I also think I can attribute that to bottling so much up for so long that was bothering me and not saying anything but now I got everything off my chest today I feel really good and listening to Fleetwood Mac I was like man I feel so calm and happy even though a lot of Fleetwood Mac is breakup songs. <laughs> but anyway, I just love how peaceful their music is. They're so talented. I want to go see them again. I've seen them once, but I had like really bad seats. So I like really want to go and like get some like good seats, like right up front, you know? Um, but yeah, Stevie Nicks is like a huge inspiration for me. I really, really admire her. I think she's so beautiful and she's so talented and um the fact that she's so open about like her addiction and um that she learned from her addiction and that she's not dead right now you know it's just all huge um so she's so inspiring me I love Stevie Nicks love Fleetwood Mac uh and I love the like energy it makes me feel like I'm just so like just chill right now I just feel good love you guys hello Hi. What's the matter? This cat just showed up. I didn't even notice it. I was bringing in Christmas stuff and he's just here. Or she, I can't see. You need help. Hi. Yeah, you need some help. I don't know what to do with you because animal control isn't gonna come out if I call them. Hi. I don't have any kitty food. Honey, your poor eyes. What's going on? She getting a bad fight? 
Hi. Oh my god, you guys. I don't know if you can see. Uh, I don't know what to do. I don't have a cat catcher or anything. Oh goodness. Maybe I'll leave him some food. There's a lot of strays around here. I'm guessing that's what he is. I think he was about to wander in my house. Oh my goodness. Hey, sweetheart. Psst, 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 psst. Hey, what is it? Hi, kitty. He is sick. He's got like an upper respiratory. I can see it. I can see like his nose is all congested. Can you guys see? He's got something really bad. Oh no, I don't know what to do, honey. Oh goodness. So the kitty took off. It's kind of thing. Like, so where I'm at, there's a lot of feral cats in South Carolina. Like, Anderson area in particular, there's so many feral cats. And he's talking, but like, he didn't want to get anywhere near me. So, he's obviously very sick. So, I did not want to touch him. I don't want to expose my dogs to anything. And yeah, he took off. Um, so, the thing, like, about this area is like you feel really powerless when you find an animal like that like unless you can personally take it in and do something about it there's really just not a lot that will happen I've tried calling animal control it takes them forever to come out like by the time they got here I would have no idea where the cat is I mean he already took off I already don't know where he went um but yeah it's it's hard um I grew up doing cat rescue with my grandma and she would catch a lot of the cats and then she'd take them and rehabilitate them and get them adopted out. And she ended up keeping a lot of them. And that's the thing is like, I can't bring them inside. Like Rocco, he doesn't like little dogs and I promise you he would kill a cat too. And I can't put a cat in that kind of position. Um, and yeah, I'm just not in a spot that I can bring in any animals. So it makes me feel really powerless. But also at the same time that reminds me of what my ultimate goal is like especially if I do get it big on YouTube or whatever if I reach my goals and I bring in the money I want to be bringing in I want to do a rescue for animals that don't have anywhere else to go like the ones that are unadoptable or maybe they're seniors and they're like less adoptable or whatever I want to do a rescue like that um at some point that's an end goal for me um because yeah it's really defeating knowing that there's so many animals that need your help and there's nothing that you can do. I don't have anywhere to put them. And finding anywhere that will take them. It's like there's so many cats. It's like you can, I could message people all day long and nobody would take the cats. And it's like, I would end up having to hold it and I can't hold it. And I, there's no way. If it slipped out and got to Rocco, it'd be dead. And it's like, to me, I'm putting it in a more danger bringing it in my house than I would be if just leaving it where it is. So I know the neighbor feeds the cats and I'm guessing that's probably why he's here, but I really wish I could catch him and do something with him. But if I catch him, they're going to want me to pay for it. And it's like, shit, I've got my, like, you know, just taking care of Rocco is so expensive. You know, he's got, his own issues and it's like you know I already have the responsibility of that I can't can't do anything about it this sucks you really want to save them all and I remember one time my grandma like I brought in like all these cats and like I found the whole litter of kittens and they were all sick like that the runny noses runny eyes and, like that's probably upper respiratory that cat's probably gonna need medication um so it would have to go somewhere that would either take care of it as it is or somebody that could bring it in and take care of it and like give it its medication but I can't do it and it sucks so sad but like I said my neighbor's feeding him so at least I know he's got food out and if I didn't know his, the neighbor was feeding him then I would make sure to put some food out or something to help it a little bit but sometimes like all you can do is just leave some food and water and just hope for the best you know some cats won't even come to you I know my grandma had so many feral cats that came out of the woods that she could never get, you know, they wouldn't even, they were so feral, you know, that's sad, poor kitties, cat rescue, if you do cat rescue or you know anybody that does cat rescue, like, they need a hug, seriously, their job's hard as fuck, 
and it never failed every time we had a litter of kittens whenever we were little like my grandma would end up with like she'd find pregnant cats and she'd keep them like and then they'd have their litter and then she'd get them fixed and then she'd rehome the cat and the kittens and um it's like every litter we would have like one kitten would die it would seem like it was like always like the runt like there would be one with health problems because of like breeding issues with cats like especially when they're overbred the way that they are here um there's a lot of cats with like health issues and we saw a lot of cats die and you know it was always the ones that my grandma was most attached to so it's hard cat rescue is really fucking hard poor kitty i hope he's okay he's out again keep hoping he's gonna come back but i don't think he is i've never seen him before so it's kind of surprising but poor kitty sad it uh, Pest Store Direct just got back to me and they're looking into it. I was like, like at this point, like just let me know. Like if I'm not going to get my money back, that's fine. It's still on my end, still shows in my bank account that I've paid for it. So I'm going to fucking write it off on my taxes. Like I paid for it and I'm using it because uh, as far as anyone's concerned, I, I am. Like there's no refund there. So whatever. I'll just write it off on my taxes. It's not that big of a deal. It's frustrating. Cause like I said, if I, like if I would have thought about this being a possibility, then I probably wouldn't have just like, I just wouldn't have sent it back. You know, it's just like, I would have just used it. It's fine. But then I also did get a message today that somebody reacted to it. So whatever, it would have probably sat here till the end of time or maybe I would have sold it online or something I don't know but I, it's just like if it's gonna be a loss I'd just like to know it's gonna be a loss like just let me know like if you say you're gonna get back to me like just get back to me because <laughs> I hate like having to like keep messaging and be like hi again here's me again like asking about my shit because I feel like if I don't message and I don't stay on people then like it's just not gonna happen so anyway um I just told him I was like if it's if, if it's gonna be a loss for me it's gonna be a loss for me it's fine but just let me know like if you guys don't have it I I just said flat out I was like if you don't have it by now it's literally it should have been there by December 19th today is January 6th so it's been like several weeks like if it's not there it's probably not gonna show up like chances are it's probably not gonna show up like, yeah, you could say, like, oh, it's lost in the mail, whatever. I, I don't think at this point, like, unless it, like, somehow got super fucking lost to where it didn't even come back to me, which is what should have happened. Um, regardless, I don't think it's just going to show up at their doorstep at this point. It's so late. Um, and I haven't gotten any notifications or whatever about it. So, I don't know if it, like, I know they may have been closed for a little bit. Like, maybe some, it was sitting on their doorstep. Somebody walked by and took it. I don't know what their facility's like or where it's located. I don't know. All I know is I don't have the fucking thing. It hasn't been returned to me. They obviously don't have it either. So, I'm just like, all right. I'm honestly, at this point, this will probably be the last time I even bring it up. If I get my refund, great. That's what I'm hoping for. Um, if I don't, then I don't, I get it. Like, it's not like, I, I understand why they can't give a refund without the product for all they know. I just didn't send it. Um, so I understand if they can't give me a refund, that's fine. I'm just like more kicking myself. Cause I'm like, honestly mad that I even bought the stupid product. I'm kicking myself because I should have paid attention when I bought the first bottle to the ingredients, but I just didn't even read them. And like when I noticed they weren't there, I assumed they were online and then they weren't. And it was just like this whole thing. So anyway, I'm mad that I didn't read the ingredients. It's my fault. So it's all my fault for ordering shit and not looking enough into them. It's my fault. So if I'm out like $70, I'm out $70. It's, it is what it is. But on the bright side, my uh, Hydra order for my moisturizing shampoo should be here today. And then I ordered some stuff from Cascade Grooming that should be here Thursday. And some new stuff I've never tried before. So I'm excited. But I'm like, God, I'm like so like burnt out on it. I'm like, you know what? Like this thing, this has been going on for like weeks. And I'm like, whatever. Like if they don't get back to me, then fine. I'm just going to take the loss. <laughs> Like, I'm just so burnt out. Like, I just don't even feel like talking about it anymore. Um, but yeah. I'm debating if I should just go ahead and end this vlog. Because it's been such a long vlog today. 
Normally, I try to make it go, like, all day, but I think I'm actually going to play some Pokemon Shield. I've still got a vacuum over here. I don't know if you can, you probably can't see. You can kind of see, like, all the little needles from the Christmas tree. I've got a vacuum up. I was about to do that, but um, I heard my, my phone go off and saw that message from Pet Store Direct, and... I, I want to be clear, I appreciate them trying to figure it out, but it's like at this point, I'm just like, it's obviously not going to show up. Like, I told them flat out, I was like, look, I sent three packages, same time I, I when I sent yours, it was, or it was three total packages, so two other packages. One was going to Fort Lauderdale, one was going to the UK, the other one was going to Australia. The UK and Australia both made it through customs and to their location, they made it to my friend's. Um, and then somehow this other one hasn't made it to Fort Lauderdale, which is like two states away. <laughs> like it's, it didn't, they didn't have to go through customs. It should have been there. It should have like been in there. And if it's not, I don't know where the fuck it is. Like, so I'm guessing I'm just going to take the loss, but that, and that's pretty much what I told him. I was just like, you know what, at this point, I'm just going to take the loss. It's fine. I'm just trying to figure out like what's going on like and just make sure before I like write it off and like you know because like I, I don't I don't know I don't want to like write it off and then like not look at their website and realize like oh I have this like credit this whole time like just I I mean honestly at this point I might just like message them if they message me again I might just message them back and be like if you end up giving me a credit just like let me know and we'll just leave it at that because what else is there to do you know, it's just, it's not there and it's not here and I don't know where the fuck it would be. So I don't know. Anyway, I feel like this has been such a ranting vlog and I feel about it so long, but still been a pretty eventful day. I'd say I'm really happy about getting that Christmas stuff down. I tried to get the stuff down that like the one tree that we have in our driveway and it's so like tall. I can't do it. I'm going to have to, I think Derek did it with a ladder. There's no way I'm getting that shit off being five foot three trying to climb up. <laughs> There's no way. So anyway, um, I, I like had a brief moment of like, maybe I can make Jeff come do it. <laughs> I don't think Jeff wants to do it. So anyway, uh, I love you guys. Thank you for watching. Um, I feel bad. It was such a ranty vlog, but like, I feel like it was really real. Yeah. Hopefully this Pet Store Direct stuff will be, like, worked out soon. I'm, like, so bummed. Like, I, and, like, again, I'm not mad with them. It's just, like, damn it. Like, I'm mad with myself because I don't think I got, like, a tracking thing. Like, I was so, because we had to do custom forms and, like, all this shit. And I was shipping it the week before Christmas. And it was just, like, chaotic in there. I didn't, I... And I, that was, like, my first time, like, really shipping anything. So, I don't think that I, uh, I, sorry, Steph just messaged me. She's been having trouble getting her daughter to sleep and she finally fell asleep. But, um, I just didn't really know what I was doing. And I didn't get a tracking slip. And it's, it's my fault. And it's, it's gone. It, I should have had it to where they, like, had to sign for it or something. Like, it's my fault. And now I'm out, like, $70. So, Anyway, lesson learned, um, don't just go buying shit, because, like, that's kind of the thing, is, like, I was just, like, buying it because I wanted to try something different, so I could, like, review it for you guys, so I need to start doing a little bit more research into the things I'm buying instead of, like, just spur of the moment buying because something's on sale for Black Friday, because that's exactly what I did, um, but yeah, I love you guys, <laughs> sorry for this, like, downer vlog, I hope it wasn't super downer, like, yeah, but, um, I'm also uploading, when I upload this one, it will be the video of me taking down the Christmas tree too, which I think was pretty funny. Um, but yeah, I love you guys. I hope you're having a great day, whatever day it is that I upload this. I keep saying that, but I think I'll upload it tomorrow. <laughs> it's not like a grand mystery. It's like, I'll see, you'll see this tomorrow. So have a great day. All right. I love you. Talk to you soon. Bye.